Hello everyone, this is the Maintaining Your Metadata webinar. Uh, we'll get started in another minute, but there are still a few people signing on. Okay, let's get started. Uh, this is the Maintaining Your Metadata webinar. Um, just some housekeeping before we get started. We'll be sending out both the presentation slides and a recording of the webinar shortly after we've finished. The audio is uh, mute, muted, so all the phones are muted, but feel free to ask questions in the questions pane to your right, and I will answer them as we go through the webinar. And uh, if I don't get to any, I'll play some catch up at the end. Uh, the focus of this webinar is maintaining your metadata with Crossref. We'll touch briefly on what metadata we collect, then describe how you can add to, update, and evaluate your metadata. We won't be covering how you initially register your metadata. When you register your content with us, you create a metadata record for that content. That record, as with most metadata, describes the content in detail. The level of detail you supply to us is up to you, but a record sent to Crossref must contain bibliographic metadata such as author names, ORCIDs, affiliations, article title, ISSN, ISBN, pages, issue numbers, value numbers, internal identifiers, publication dates, and of course, uh, a Crossref identifier, and we use the DOI as an identifier. We collect a lot of other metadata as well. It's not traditional bibliographic metadata, but it can be just as important for describing your content and where it sits in relation to other scholarly objects. So we collect um, information about where you're going to archive your content if you ever go out of business. We collect uh, free to read information for open access content. We collect reference lists, funding data, license data, clinical trial numbers, information about errata, retractions, updates, and more through our Crossmark, Crossmark service. Um, and we also collect information about relationships between items. Together, it all adds up to a complete metadata record. And we realize it's not easy to gather and send along all this metadata. So we only really require bibliographic metadata but a complete record will have all of the above and help place your content on the scholarly map. So if you've been registering your content with us and you've omitted or uh, partially supplied some of this data, it's okay. I'm going to go into how to update your existing records with corrections and enhancements. When you create a record with us, the most persistent part is the identifier you register, the DOI. The rest of the record can be updated and expanded continuously. Again, we make a distinction between bibliographic and other types of metadata. It's all important, but when you create a metadata record, you must include bibliographic metadata and identifiers when your content is initially registered. You can include all metadata we collect in your initial registration, but most non-bibliographic metadata can also be added post-registration as you're able, and I'll go into how to do that in a second. So a bibliographic metadata record includes citation metadata, such as the author title, ISSN, um, and other details used when citing an item. It also may include ORCIDs for authors, as well as JATS formatted abstracts. But these are both optional, but we strongly recommend them. Um, this metadata is used to identify the items being registered. It's also 
distributed to third parties, and is used to look up your DOIs so that people can link to your content. So it's very important that that information be supplied to us and that it's accurate. Um, you can't create a metadata record without metadata. As I mentioned, you can add some types of metadata to your record after it's been registered. Um, these include reference deposits. If you participate in our site advice service, you'll, send a, you'll be sending us a, your reference lists for journal articles, but we encourage everyone to send those along. Uh, you can add funding data components, uh, which are what we call supplemental material metadata records. Uh, you can send us your crossmark data, text and data mining license information, and information about relationships between DOIs and other identifiers. So this means you can create a record for a journal article, for example, that contains just bibliographic metadata. You decide to participate in our site advice service, so you can then just submit the reference list to be added to your metadata, existing metadata record. You decide to participate in Crossmark, and or you want to send us funding and license data, that can also be added to the existing record in segments without resubmitting the record as a whole. This works very well if you partner with vendors to provide funding information, for example, or if your platform doesn't support reference deposits and you want to do that on your own. You can add this metadata as needed without, for the most part, incurring additional feeds. Um, the exception is crossmark metadata. Um, otherwise, updating a record doesn't cost you anything. We charge a one-time deposit fee when a record is initially registered. Uh, likewise, we'll charge a one-time per record crossmark fee when crossmark data is initially added, but we don't charge for um, crossmark updates for existing crossmark records. We don't charge if you're adding funding data to an existing record. Um, we don't charge if you're adding a reference list to an existing uh, record. We only charge you a fee when that data is initially re registered, when the DOI is initially registered. If you've discovered errors in your metadata or you otherwise need to make an update, you do need to redeposit your metadata with the changes included. And any metadata already in our system will be overwritten. So make sure you send us everything, particularly when you're updating bibliographic metadata. For example, if you deposit your DOIs with an online publication date before the item has been pub published in print, you can update the metadata once the print information is available. The data that can be submitted using a resource deposit, um, such as references or funding data, doesn't need to be included when only core metadata is updated. But within each resource type, you do need to submit the complete resource data. So, for example, if you discover you've left a grant number out of your funding information for an article, you can submit just the funding data in an update. You do need to include all of the funding date data for that item. We don't append data within a resource. So if you include just the grant number, the existing funder information will be overwritten and your record will still be incomplete. So if you're resupplying us funding data, you have to, have to send us complete funding data, but you don't have to send us a complete metadata record to update your funding data. URLs are a little bit special. Um, you can update your URLs by resubmitting the bibliographic portion of your metadata record or you can send us a list of DOIs and your URLs and we'll update them for you. And we encourage you to update them as often as you need to. And when I say send us a list of DOIs and URLs, you can just dump that into a text file, tab separated text file and email it to support at crossref.org. If you need to remove metadata from a record, you can't really remove top level bibliographic metadata. Um, that's only ever necessary when something has really gone wrong, if you've registered something by mistake. Um, in that case, you'll need to override it with non-descriptive metadata, but you should really contact us before you do that, so I'm not going to um, go into details about how to do that. Well, that's a bit of a secret that you'll have to contact us to get information about. Because we allow you to update your resource metadata in segments, we require that you be very explicit when re you remove resource metadata from your record. We require that you submit an empty top-level tag to remove a segment of resource metadata. So for example, if you decide you don't want to supply us with crossmark metadata, 
um, or the Crossmark metadata you've supplied to us is incorrect and you want to take a few moments and remove it all and figure out what's gone wrong, you'll need to submit a metadata or resource registration file with a closed Crossmark tag, as you see on the slide. Um, so a closed Crossmark tag removes all funding data. Um, Fundref data is supplied in a program tag, so you'd need to supply a closed uh, funding, fund, funding specific program tag. Same goes for a citation list tag um, and um, so on. If you do decide to do a big update to your metadata, there are some things that you need to keep in mind. Sending us a large amount of files is usually okay, depending on what your definition of large is. So if you're sending us thousands of updates, you may want to co coordinate that with us. Um, note that we only allow 10,000 files per user in our submission queue. So if you have more than 10,000 files to send to us, you'll need to send them in batches and pay attention to our submission queue and make sure that the number dips below 10,000 before you send in more. If you're sending in 100,000 or more, you might, you should probably contact us just so that we know what to expect. Uh, our, we do a pretty good job of handling large updates, but um, depending on overall traffic and what else is going on, um, if you have a tight deadline, you will need to contact us and coordinate that with us so we can prepare for you. So let's move on to evaluating your metadata, which can sometimes be pretty tricky. Um, we have some plans to make it much easier for you to see at a glance where your problem areas are, but they aren't in place yet. I'm gonna uh, talk a little about that in a bit, but there's still a lot that can be done right now. I'm gonna walk you through some basics. We'll start with how to view the metadata you've registered with us. If you want to easily, I eyeball your basic metadata, you can use our metadata search interface just to look at a few records. It presents a segment of the metadata, not everything, but it lets you know some basic information like title and author and publication title. You can search by DOI or ISSN, article title or author, it's a free text search. So in this example, there's an encoding issue in the article title. It jumps out at you, the diamond question mark. Um, other common things to look at for our author information. We do have a lot of authors who use this tool for various reasons, and they're constantly contacting us to complain about issues with their names and publisher metadata, misspellings, of the wrong order, or if their name is missing entirely. Um, that can cause authors a lot of problems when they try to claim credit for their work. Um, it's important that, they're inf that they be represented accurately in Crossref metadata. We have a fairly robust REST API that is publicly available, and it can be used to retrieve or interrogate your metadata. It displays uh, almost all of the metadata you've registered, I think pretty much all of it at this point. Um, references by default are not included unless you have opted to make them public, which we hope you have. Um, def by default, references aren't, aren't distributed to the public, but um, if you'd like to make them public, so make your any references lists you've registered with us available for people to download and look at, um, please contact Crossref support and we'll tell you how to make that happen. Um, you can use the REST API to retrieve the metadata for your prefixes or for other members' prefixes. Um, you can also use it to retrieve metadata DOI by DOI as in this example. And this is an example of the type of record you can get from our REST API. The results are in JSON and they'll include the metadata you've registered with us, um, as well as um, some data we insert, like the publisher name, and we include um, the count of items that are citing your articles. You can use this API to do some basic troubleshooting, if, even if you're not a highly technical person. Um, here's an example query that will show you the total, total number of DOIs registered for your um, Crossref prefix. If that number doesn't match with what you expect, you may need to do some further digging. 
The REST ABI is indexed fairly quickly, but not instantaneously. So if you've just registered something, you may want to wait until the next day to make sure everything is included in your query. Uh, so for most queries using the REST API, e including a row count of zero in the query, will give you a count of the records in the request, but not the records themselves. So if you're not able to um, ingest loads of JSON formatted data, you can still do some basic troubleshooting. You can um, do some fairly specific filtered queries. So for example, if you register funding data with us, you can look up all DOIs with funder identifiers or just the number of those records. You can look up the number of records with a funder identifier and a funder name. You can look up the number of records with award numbers. This data will give you an, an idea of how effective your funding data is overall. Um, it's also pretty handy if you have vendors submitting this data and you wanna keep an eye on them. So here's some more example filters. You can see how many records have cross-marked data, how many records have license URLs, and how many of your records have at least one ORCID included in the metadata? We have also have an XML API that can be useful. You can look up the metadata you've deposited for an item, and this query will show you everything as, you, as you've deposited it. The results will include references if you supply your system login when doing the query, <coughs> if you've opted to keep your reference hidden. Um, we also have a tool called the Deposit Harvester. It's OAI PMH based and will retrieve your data in title based sets. Um, I have linked to all of the mentioned tools at the end of these slides. Um, so if you want to learn more about any of them, that information will be sent out when the slides are sent out. And here is an example of the type of record you get when you use the Deposit Harvester or the XML API. Uh, many of you will recognize it. It looks just like the XML you send in for your deposits. So the Deposit Harvester tool is a good way of retrieving complete metadata. If you've acquired content that has been registered by another member, um, you'll be able to pull down somewhat deposit-ready XML. So, and it's important to note that if you do acquire content from another member, if that content includes Crossref DOIs, you'll be in charge of the metadata for those DOIs. Um, Many members opt to re-register the metadata, but if the metadata is thorough um, and complete, you really just need to update the URLs and any text and data mining license information that's been supplied to us. Um, it's always a good idea to confirm that the metadata you're responsible for is in good condition. We have some reports that help you with metadata issues. Some are sent out by email. Um, usually to the technical contacts we have on file for your organization. So if you've had some staff turnover, make sure you keep us up to date with who you want to um, be in charge of uh, keeping in contact with Crossref technical issues. Um, also, please, please review the emails we send to you. They usually come from reports at crossref.org. We also send out a fair number of emails to members individually about metadata quality issues. Um, about a third of the requests that come through our Crossref support team are related to metadata quality issues. Metadata consumers report problems one by one. As you probably know, we don't touch your metadata, so we do need to pass those reports along to you for action. We get a lot of complaints from authors about how their names or article titles are represented, and our metadata affiliates also pass along complaints about missing page numbers, incorrect titles, um, little things, but they make a big difference in discovering your content. Um, and our metadata is just displayed everywhere, so even tiny errors can have a huge impact on how your content is uh, viewed online. I'm going to dig into a few details about some of our reports. We have a title list on our website that allows you to look up your titles by ISSN or title. It displays coverage information, which can be pretty illuminating. If you do nothing else, journal publishers might want to scan the coverage list just to make sure you haven't missed any issues or registered content with the publication year of 2032, or even 1332, it happens more than you might think. We also have the title data available as a CSV file. It's a big file, but if you have a lot of titles, it's a little easier to review um, using a CSV file. Um, 
We also send out weekly uh, reports called Schematron reports. They're very metadata specifics. They're used to identify messy met metadata. Um, we do need to be flexible and accommodate variances in data, so our deposit schema can't keep all of the questionable data out without blocking good data as well. So we do a post-deposit review of metadata and pick out items that we think might be incorrect, such as uh, text in the addition field, um, text that's in all uppercase, um, just, you know, footnote symbols in surnames. Um, these reports are emailed out weekly on Saturday. Um, we send out an average of 45 reports a week, which considering we have, uh, those are per prefix and we have 9,000 prefixes, it's not a lot, um, but it's a very effective tool. Members are very responsive, responsive when they get this sort of alert, so we hope you will be as well. Um, so earlier, I ran through some API queries you can use to get data on what you've been sending us. And we are planning to launch a public report that will give you these details visually so that you can see what, what you're sending us without jumping through a bunch of hoops. We're calling these participation reports and they will help um, measure the impact of member participation. So you, these reports, we haven't finalized the, the design, but this is just a, a screenshot of our beta version. You'll be able to pull up data member by member and you can see how many DOIs you've registered and you can drill down and see what data you have provided beyond the minimum required set. Um, so you and everyone else will be able to see if you are sending us references, if your references are publicly available, if you're including funding and license data, and if you're participating in Crossmark. Uh, again, this is a screenshot of our working version, um, so it might change, but generally you'll, you'll be able to see the overall percentage of your record that contain each type of metadata. And you'll also be able to sort that by journal title. So, so you'll be able to see those um, numbers by journal title. Our initial release will cover just journal articles, but we'll be including other content types in the future. And we hope to launch this early next year. We feel like these reports will make huge strides towards helping our members supply quality comprehensive metadata. And if you want to help us out and beta test the report designs, um, please send us an email at support at crossref.org and we'll add you to our list of testers and someone will be in touch with you. Um, we're, we are also looking for willing gu guinea pigs for our new metadata manager tool, which will replace our current web deposit form. So if you want to help us out with that, please, please, please get into contact with us as well and, and volunteer. This is a great opportunity to help us shape the tools you need, so we hope you're able to spare us a few moments. So I've asked you to help us, but if you need help from us um, to you, we have lots of documentation. We have a small but ca very capable support staff. Um, we give support mostly by email, so you can reach out to us through our support portal at support.crossref.org or, sh or shoot us an email. And as mentioned, I've included a list of resources in the slide. I've also linked a video to a video of a talk given by Ian Calvert at our Live 16 event last year. Um, the talk is about a half hour and focuses on metadata quality. Um, he has a lot of fun with Crossref metadata and data visualization. So if you're interested in that and you have some time, please watch. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, ask them in the questions pane or reach out to our support staff at support at crossref.org. We also have a support Twitter account at Crossref Support. And thank you for attending the webinar.